Oh, they're locked. Bummer. Good morning. Well, we are uh, servicing the combine today. So, I'm up here in our filter storage area looking for filters. We got a whole pile of them we got to take down. Well, I did a little picking trying to get some more dirt off. It doesn't look like much, but I feel like I picked off a lot of stuff. I got I got that pile and that stuff there. There is there's it it it's growing and gets down in there and it's gross, it stinks, it's rotten, it's sprouted. The roots get all tangled up so you can't pull it out. Ugh, frustrating. But I got some more. I got, I got a pile of stuff there. So we are going to close it up, take it outside, and run it for five or ten minutes. Get the oil all warmed up and everything. And then we're going to change filters and oil and all kinds of stuff. I did pull the book out when I started. I'll check out the hours and we'll see how many hours we put on it this year and all that good stuff. Just pulling it straight out forward far enough to uh, be able to run it and get the door closed. Her up to high idle and let her sit for a few minutes. Look, our floor is nice and clean. Uh, we're gonna need our oil tote, used oil tote, so we gotta go dig it out of the barn in the back. Oh, they're locked. Bummer. He wears a Case IH hat to work here every day. I gotta pick on him a little bit. Huh. Which one of those two do I want? I want that one, but not real easy to get to. A lot of stuff in the way. We'll figure it out. I just want you all to see the amount of scale skill that I have driving a forklift. I got that one out of there. We had to push some stuff around by hand and I may have bumped a few things on the way and we're going up to get out. But dang it, we got it. Oh, 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 boards. Hitting some boards. And then there's that thing. It's a little tight. We're getting it. Okay, we got this back inside. Engine hours, 2436, 1772. Remember those numbers, 2436. 1772. All right. Oh, God, look at all the dirt. Oh, gosh. Anyway, we're going to loosen up the drain or the fill and then down, down. Where's it at? Uh, down there. Right there is the oil drain. There. Now the oil's dripping out, and we better hurry up so we can change the pail when it gets full. They have it conveniently hosed down to pail hut. I don't know what exactly our capacity is on this, but two pails ought to do it. We'll see. We'll have another one just in case. So if you didn't follow me last uh, winter, um, this is the book. This is the combine book. I have read this book cover to cover, minus the first third that's all safety stuff. Whatever. Uh, but we write down what we do every year to the combine. You can see the, the New Year's. We didn't do much. And then it gets longer and longer and longer lists of what all got done and changed and all of that. Um, but I also have hours here. So last year we had 2,064 engine hours. So 2436 minus 2064 is 372 hours we put on the combine this year. I don't know if that's a lot. Uh, it feels about right. It feels like we can justify owning a machine this size to put that kind of hours on it. And, you know, we're not way oversized or putting way too many hours on it where we can't get stuff done. So it seems like it's a pretty good amount of hours. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the second pail. It, it probably won't overflow that, but I'm just going to let it drip there for a while. So now we need to get on to some filters. We got engine air filter, fuel filters, and oil filter, engine oil filter up there. Um, here is the pile. Let's see, two fuel filters. I've also got a vent for the fuel tank, which I'm going to change because I think that the one that on there is getting plugged up. Uh, this one is the engine oil filter, and our engine air filter is in that box, and there's a secondary one in that box. All right, we're teaching. 
So I'll get the pail under there and then, yeah, you might have to put that on first. Yep, that way. Once you get it broke loose, you can take that off and put it in my hand. I'm gonna go get you some rags because you're gonna need them. Oh, not much on it. Yep, yep. The fuel filters, you won't get that. Well, we gotta drain them. But. All right, uh, I would just tip that. No, I'll just leave it in there. I'll take it down like that. Um, so the fuel filters, there's a little drain plug on the bottom you gotta open up. I think on both of them. No, not on that one? Okay, well then drain the other one first. Actually, I should read in the book because there's a specific order that these are supposed to be changed in. But you can drain that one. Just reach under there, feel the thing, and turn it. Put that thing under it. Yeah. All right. Let's go look in the book. Air filter. Big. Not terribly dirty. Impressive. Change it anyway because we put a new one on every year. Just grab it. It doesn't matter if you've done it, huh? Nope. No nope. big. Alright. Okay. We gotta take the cup off the bottom of that and put it on the new filter. Look guys, we're way ahead of schedule. 12 17 of 19. It's uh November 20th. We're almost a month ahead of last year. Service in the combo. That's a good deal. Alright, we got this cup off. Uh, this is the water separator. And this is a sensor, if that gets covered up with water, it sends an alarm and says to go and drain it. So we've got to uh, put that on our new filter here, put the O-ring on, which I believe is this one, and we gotta lube it up, so we'll do that. All right, so we've got our fuel filters installed here, and I'm gonna write the hours and the date on them so that we know, basically so next year I'll know what time what day it was and I'll feel really bad about being so far behind because there's no way it'll be November 20th next year probably be like January 10th when we're done harvesting or something like that oh god look at all the dirt Ugh. all right so we're working on air filters he's cleaning up the housing here's our uh in inner air filter it's kind of the secondary one. Oh, oh, oh. this is the old one and the one that I just dropped that's rolling on the floor getting dirty is the new one and I know that they don't look much different just looking at them but watch this look at when I shine the light through here I don't know if the camera will show this or not but nice bright and when I shine it through here you can see it's duller there's dirt in this filter I know it's not dirty but it's not cleanable it's not something that you don't want that filter to get dirty if that one gets dirty it means that that one it's got a hole in it or there's dirt going through it. So change them both every time, every year. Okay, so we've got the air filters for the engine changed. Another one. And uh, this combine has a second air filter system right there. Now, why would it have two big engine air filters, right? Well, it's not an engine air filter. That air filter there is actually attached to this line that goes to that blower which pressurizes this exhaust cabinet. It goes around the exhaust components um, to keep all the dirt and dust and debris away from them. It's where the uh, 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 diesel particulate filter and the uh, uh, oxidation catalyst stuff, anyway, for the DEF and all that is. It gets super, super hot, so they pressurize it to keep the dirt and debris away from it so it doesn't start fires. Uh, and they have to have clean air to do it. So there is an air filter in there, actually two again, a second primary and a secondary. Uh, when we first got this combine, the air intake for that was literally right there. Like that's where it was drawing its air from. As you can imagine, that's a terrible spot to try and draw air on a combine. It was plugging up daily. Uh, so shortly after they had a, a, a PIP or a product improvement program uh, come out and they routed a, a tube that goes all the way up and it actually draws air from the same place as the engine uh, air filter. And now we don't have to clean it ever. I mean, replace it once a year and it's good. And yeah, it's a little dirty, but it's not, it's not bad. Our pile is shrinking. Those two are just uh, cab air filters. So he's got 
those ones put back in. We're close to it. So that one is the cab air filter. It brings fresh air in from outside. And by fresh air, I mean the dirtiest air you will have ever seen in your life. That one is dirty. And there's a three inches of soybean dust in there. Yeah. For reference, that's the new one. Last one, it's inside the cab. Open the door. And you see that cover up there? It just pops down. Right there, just on the side. Yeah, all right. And then pull the filter out without getting all the dust everywhere. Good work. Yikes. That one is actually taking dirt out of the air from inside the cab. She's dirty. Okay, well, we're waiting for a couple of pieces to dry to put back on the covers, but that's pretty much it for the filter side of it. We need to put engine oil back in, and then I need to start going through the book and seeing what else we need to do. I don't think we gotta do hydraulic oil, but that's what I gotta look up. Yeah, according to my notes here, we changed hydraulic oil last year and transmission oil, so no need to do that. Uh, we do, I believe, I'll, uh, I'll double check what the service interval is, but on the feeder house, there's a reverser that I think we need to change the oil in. Okay, well, um, that feeder house reverser gear case is an 800 hour interval and uh, does not need done this year. So we're not gonna do that, which means we just need to get engine oil back in it. Bulk oil is a very, very nice thing. We pump it out of our tanks up there into the combine. Uh, it takes 45 and a half quart. Uh, it's just gonna take a minute. Well, while we're having fun with the combine here, uh, this belt right, right here, she needs changed. And in order to do that belt, guess what? We gotta do, take off this belt and these two belts. So I'm gonna work on getting that apart. So in order to get this belt off. We had to take the belt off of this pulley, which required taking apart the shield that was here that's now laying over there. And we can't get this belt off because it's too tight there. So the whole dang pulley's gotta come off. You ready to start washing? I guess. <laughs> we can delay this a little bit longer. So our tractor's done, right? Did I tell you guys that? I don't know if I told you that or not. Anyway, our tractor is done. If I haven't told you. So if you want, you can run me up there and I'll drive the tractor back and you can come back here and wash on this until I get back. Let's go get it. That's what I thought. Okay, we're going to get the tractor. See you later. Well, there it is. Time to go home, tractor. Let's see if we can see what, uh, anything that looks shiny and new. Eh, not without taking this cover off, we can't. Something in there is shiny and new though. All right, well, it's about as long home from here as it is uh, from home to Berkey, so it'll take us an hour and 15 minutes probably. I see it, I see where we're headed. Well, we're doing a little shuffling. Dad said he's gonna need that 7520 tomorrow, so we're gonna put this tractor where that one was. And he said he needs a 4442, so I'm just making sure we can get to what he needs to get to. And we'll leave this right here. Let's go see how Brock's doing with the washing. He's cleaning, but man, he's got the tunes rolling in here. Okay, one of the things we got while we were up there at that John Deere dealer, grease for the grain cart. Takes a different grease than what we use on everything else, uh, lithium grease. So I'm gonna walk around this thing and hit all the grease jerks on it while, uh, while I'm thinking about it. This is what locking grease tips and trigger locks are for. Still in the auto loser. We're gonna stick, uh, I don't know, a couple more tubes in there probably. And then at 55, if you were wondering, that's how long it takes to pump a whole tube of grease. I got her full. Oh, close enough. Probably could get another one in there, but we're gonna call it good. I put five tubes of grease through this thing today, or just grease in the cart and filling that, so she's good to go in July. 
Okay, it's time for a different project. Been washing for a while. It's, we're getting more stuff off of it. I'll show you in a second. We need electricity up there. We just happen to have a plug underneath this cover, so we plugged her in there. We need power for our Christmas lights. Uh, looks like we got a couple of bulbs out. We're gonna get some more because I don't have enough here to fix that. But most of them work. That's good. I also forgot, I got a timer or a photo cell that I usually plug in there that I gotta get to, but we gotta, we gotta fix a few. We made this, oh, I don't know, a long time ago. We got little clips that each bulb goes to, so we just gotta get them put back on. I'm too lazy to come up here in January and take them down, so they stay up here all year. It's fine. I'll just buy a new strand. This one's been here for four years now, and it's still working, so we're doing good. Sorry, it's windy up here again, so you're probably hearing that and not me actually talking, but we got we got all the lights back on where they need to go. We are five bulbs short, so I gotta find five light bulbs. I know I have them in my house if I don't have them here, and uh, and 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 the, and the the photo cell, and then we're good. I won't turn them on until after Thanksgiving, I promise. We're just making sure they work because it's nice out today. Phil's got the 4020 out, cleaning up around the lay, uh, the dryer. He was trying to scrape stuff off the top there yesterday and clean it up. Brock and I also put the covers back on our electrical panels here, so that's done. We need to clean up our tools a little bit, put them away from yesterday. All right, well, it's a quarter to five. I sent Brock home. I'm going to, I'm going to get myself soaked, spray a little water, maybe find a little dirt. I actually found a lot of dirt um, for a little while here and then go home for the week weekend see them holes up there they are full of dirt chaff mostly like wheat chaff okay well i spent a half an hour i got i got some stuff off um anyway i'm gonna go home we did while we were getting that tractor today get some of our parts that we need the boxes of the chains and a couple of belts so that is good i don't know what else there's some other stuff we got, I thought, but whatever. Um, we we're making progress here. Uh, trying to figure out what all else we got to do, and really... Oh, I, was, I ordered the louvers for the chafer that were broken. That's what it was. Sorry. Uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're doing good here. Like, we got a little more washing we need to do, yes. But um, the maintenance is... We're getting it wrapped up, right? <laughs> we got the oils changed and all that stuff today, so... That's good, we put the new chains on, the couple new belts, we put the one concave back in that we need to, we fix our chafer and we put it back together. I mean, we could be done with this in a week or a week and a half, now we got Thanksgiving next week, so that'll slow things down. Um, and we gotta get the corn head hooked up. That's the big thing is the corn head yet. So hopefully, maybe next week we'll get the corn head hooked up or at least brought around and start washing that off and getting it cleaned up. And. Uh, Start tearing that apart. That's going to be a much bigger project than what the combine is. So, anyway, I'm going home. Have a good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for following along and for watching. Uh, I know things have changed since we're not in harvest anymore, and it's a whole different style of videos, but I know a lot of you guys like these too, so we're going to keep making them. And, uh, yeah, comments, questions, leave them down below. Hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, please. We'll see you on Monday, Tuesday morning.